Um, thank you. I think uh, Dr. Lohani is here, so I, it's apt that you refer to the economic reforms uh, starting in the mid-80s. I think uh, he initiated uh, uh, some of those reforms, uh, especially in the banking sector, um, where Nepal is doing reasonably well. Um, that uh, burst of early reforms in the 80s, uh, propelled by some sort of an economic crisis, was continued after the big political change in 1990. The tragedy with Nepal has been that we've not been able to sustain that, right? So after the mid-90s, late 90s, that sort of uh, petered out. Um, and we know why. Uh, the conflict uh, intervened, a lot of instability, palace massacre, you know, a um, lot of... Um, a lot of external factors uh, came, came, in, came into play. But you are right that in certain sectors, we've, we've managed to um, see uh, the country leapfrog. That is partly because of an openness, policy openness, and a dynamism of a select policy reformers and leaders. But also the technology was on our side. So in 1991, the entire country of Nepal had just 71,560 telephone lines, landlines. What happened after that? Well, mobile telephony became much more affordable. The technology aided us. But it's not enough just to have the technology out there, right? You need that receptivity. You need that, uh, that uh, willingness to really uh, engage with the rest of the world. I mean, North Korea had a similar choice, but it didn't make that choice, right? So today, you're right. Uh, I think uh, 30 million cell phone subscriptions exist. Uh, 20 million active users, according to the Nepal Telecom Authority. Um, so, you know, that, that uh, leapfrogging has been possible because of both internal and external uh, circumstances that have um, uh, been in our favor. Um, on the other hand, the deeper reforms that we expect in other sectors, that needs a lot of complementarity, right? Uh, it's not enough for individual champions to emerge. So, Kulman Gissing was able to uh, get many things done in the electricity sector, but to get the entire economy moving, you know, growing on a healthy 7, 8, 9% per annum on a sustained basis for another 12, 15 years, you need many factors to be aligned. And that's where the challenge is. That's where, where we need uh, political stability, a larger visioning uh, on the part of the leadership, uh, the private sector to, uh, you know, uh, also uh, toe the line. Uh, so a lot of uh, things uh, need to be aligned, as I said. The stars need to be aligned. And going, leading up to 2030, uh, there are three or four big changes that we need to anticipate, right? It is very likely that Nepal uh, will uh, begin to ease before becoming rich. That's a profound shift. That's a big thing that we need to internalize. Beginning 2028, we will become an easing society. We will have another 25, 26 years before we become eased. So there's a narrow window of 25, 26 years. But many countries that... Uh, mimic or replicate this kind of a demographic profile are already richer. So Indonesia comes to mind, which will also uh, enter uh, its phase of aging around the same time as Nepal, leading up to 2030, but it's already five times richer than us. Other countries, Malaysia, Japan, which did this uh, rapid transformation from an aging to an aged society, uh, did at much higher levels of income. The second profound uh, shift that we need to prepare for is we will most likely urbanize before having meaningfully industrialized. So the share of manufacturing, which is a subset of industri industry, uh, is just 6%. Now let's assume that things go very well and the sectors that Nepal has a comparative advantage, you know, uh, we really scale up uh, and go up to 12% of GDP uh, in, in manufacturing. Uh, that's still not enough to create the kind of jobs to match the young demographic profile that we will face. The third big shift that I think we need to uh, really prepare for is going forward, Nepal's policy space will be constricted much more uh, by the unknown disruptive technologies in, in the energy sector, for example, and in uh, manufacturing, the automation, the AI and all that, uh, than the known processes of catch-up and the advantage of backwardness. So, you know, we try to look at how countries prospered in the 20th century. It's not going to be terribly helpful going forward. So we need to prepare for those uncertainties the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns, as one, one defense secretary uh, uh, memorably put it. So a lot of things going ahead, but I'll come to those uh, later.